ever wished for a Canva API? Well, templated may be the answer to that wish. You can create a template just like you would in Canva of a graphic and you've got your text and your images and then you can use a simple API call to uh, insert data, merge data into that template and get back an image or a PDF. Well, in this no-code tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can do that with templated and link it in with the Bubble API Connect and a simple form in Bubble uh, to get the data, uh, to get the, the graphic back. Let's dive into my account in Templated. It's a fresh account. So they've got a generous free plan to experiment and try things out. So I'm gonna go ahead and browse their template library. And you can see this is very similar to Canva in terms of standard. Um, and of course, these are all highly customizable, but let's just take a simple one for now, like this thumbnail. Uh, where I've seen a tool like this used really well is if you've got shareable content uh, in your app and uh, you want that to be shared on social media and there's that thumbnail that comes across on social media posts, but what if you could make that dynamic like inserting data in specific uh, to the post or whatever is being shared on that social media platform. So I'm not actually gonna change this, but you can see that you can adjust the text, everything, you know, you. You, you can really go wild with it just like you could in Canva because I'm going to skip straight ahead to automate this template. And now we can see exactly what is required in the Bubble API connector to, uh, to send data across. So we have a number of factors. We've got color, we've got shape data, we've got, uh, we've got text. So all of this can be dynamically populated in the API call. Let's go into our bubble app and set that up. So we go into plugins and we go to the API connector. If you don't see this, you've got to add it through plugins, but this is a demo app that I've, I've done hundreds of bubble tutorial videos with this. And if you're interested in watching those and learning bubble at a faster pace, then click the link down in the description to find out how to do that. Because uh, we've got courses and we've got hundreds of Bubble tutorial videos there for folks like you wanting to build an app with Bubble. Uh, so I'm going to scroll all the way down. You can see things I've done in the past. I've got AI, I've got weather, I've got search, I've got web scraping, uh, I've got blue sky. Um, so let's go ahead and add in templated. And basically this is just a, a practice that you get into when you start using the Bubble API connector of uh, matching up what they give in the developer documentation. And this is all very clear, uh, clearly laid out and matching up with the Bubble API connector. So uh, we get our endpoint, which is here. It's the render endpoint. So let's copy that. Um, and we'll say, we'll add in here render. And it's a post. How do I know it's post? Well, uh, because it's method post. So you just have to look through the uh, the tools, the info that the developer of the service has provided to try and piece it all together. Um, and so then I paste in the endpoint there. Now in Bubble, it wants I want this to be an action because I want to send data as part of a workflow in Bubble. Uh, and then let's go back, see what else I need. In the headers, we need content type application JSON. Now, as of a few months ago, that is the default unless you provide an alternative value. So we don't actually need that, but we do need authorization bearer and then our API key. And I will of course be refreshing this API key before publishing this video. Um, but that needs to go up here because it needs to be clearly marked in Bubble as data that shouldn't be accessible to our users. Your API key is like a password to access your service, especially for a service where there's a billing element. You want to be able to control what your users can do with that by restrictions within your app and not giving them free access to your account through your API key. So that is all looking good. Uh, and then we'll just take everything within here. So I'm not getting the regular brackets, I'm just getting the curly brackets, copying that across uh, and inserting it. Okay, uh, so I'm now gonna dive into the API documentation by templated. And so it tells me that I can, when I send a request to the get render, uh, it is going to give me a, a 202 accepted and then change to complete. Um, that's all good. Uh, you can see just how customizable it is. And we get, oh, here we go, we get back a response like this. Uh, so part of this, I think we'll be adding in a webhook because we're doing a process with a third party API that doesn't necessarily 
uh, result in an instant response. So we don't want our bubble app just waiting. We want to be able to use a webhook so that Templated can inform our bubble app when the uh, design is ready. Um, but let's just go ahead, try this, see how it goes. Um, yeah, this all looks this all looks good. Right, yeah, let's just test it. Let's just test it. So we initialize the call. This is our way of teaching Bubble what to expect and also checking that what I've entered in here uh, is, uh, yeah, yeah, well, basically whether it works or not. So let's initialize the call and see what happens. That's good if we get an immediate error back. Uh, in fact, cool, we get back a status that it's completed. So what data do we get back? We get back URL with an image and we get back a render URL. So let's see exactly what these involve. So I'm just going to copy that. Open. Uh, oh, okay, access denied. So why is that? Or uh, render URL? Maybe maybe I'm misusing the API. Oh, there we go. Cool. So that's that has worked. Now I know it's missing the background image, but that's because uh, if you look, I'm clicking save. That's teaching Bubble the structure of data that's coming back. But if you look, it's all sample images here, so it was never going to render correctly. But um, I'll show you in a moment how you can make those dynamic. Oh, and actually, crumbs, you need to take take this bit out. Uh, so I think, actually, it probably needs to be that. Let's try again. Yeah, okay, let me just see if I can clearly draw that out here. So we're taking everything from templated all the way down to the, uh, yeah, th that's what's needed in the Bubble API connector because we put the header section, we put the header sections, well, the, the authorization up top. Um, okay, so we get back our image, perfect. Let's now make it a bit more dynamic and build a simple form. So what if I wanted to change the text of core? Well, I can add dynamic values straight into the API connector using triangle brackets. So I'm gonna do this and I can label it anything I want. I just want it to be helpful for me in order to match up in a moment. So I'm gonna call this title, title one. Now notice that I remove the speech marks. That's because I'm gonna make it JSON safe uh, in the workflow. JSON safe is when it deals with any pesky punctuation that could uh, cause a syntax error, meaning like if you look at JSON, look how many speech marks and in commas there are. What if you use a speech mark or a comma in the text? You've got to indicate that that is text and not code. We're going to do that in the workflow. Um, but then that does mean uh, that if I uh, were to reinitialize it now, I'm going to get syntax error. I'd have to put a value back in in between speech marks in order to test it, reinitialize the call in the API connector. But you don't need to do that. What I do need to do is mark it as not private. This is what I was talking about with the API key, is the API key should be private, meaning that it is private to me and not accessible to my users. Whereas the data that my users insert into it is not uh, private because it's their data, it's their sharing it with the app, they should be able to access that. Um, what else should we change? Let's change the subtitle too. So I'll say uh, subtitle. Uh, and make sure that's not marked as private. So now if I create a new page, uh, and I'll call this one uh, templated, I'm not gonna pay much attention to design. If you're new to building apps in Bubble, do go and check out my other videos about layout. You shouldn't really use fixed. It causes a nightmare with responsive design but it does allow you to design something really quickly. So we've got two inputs. We've got title and we've got a subtitle. Okay, and then we need a button. Called, uh, or we'll say get design. I'll say render, render design. Okay, now I did notice in the documentation that it mentions webhooks, although it actually came back completed very quickly. Maybe it depends on the complexity of the design that you're doing. Um, so I will actually try and show the image straight away. Uh, so if I drag in an image block, I now need a way of 
temporarily storing the location. Remember, it comes across on the AWS storage for templated. You may want to consider saving that to your bubble app storage. In fact, I might as well show you that as we go along. So let's add in our workflow. So first thing we do is we make an API call to templated and render. The reason that it's called templated and render is because that's what I've named the API here and render. If you're not seeing that in the plugin menu in the workflow editor, that's because you've either not got this set as action or you've not successfully initialized the call. Um, but I've got it and I now have my two fields here. So I match this up with my fields on the page and I make it JSON safe. That's what I was mentioning earlier. So that wraps it in speech box and makes any punctuation within them safe. Uh, and then I go ahead and add in the subtitle and also make that JSON safe. Okay, and now I could do any number of things. I could save it to my database, but I'm just gonna use a custom state. And custom states are a way of temporarily storing data like a bucket on the page. Uh, so I'm gonna add in a custom state here uh, of, uh, and say rendered, image and it's of type image so that now I can after this call say set state and uh, my state is on my page there it is and I can get the result back from uh, templated and what I might need to change is if I uh, reinitialize the call I need to indicate that the URL that comes back is an image. So yeah, right now it's treating it as text. So actually I need to say, hey Bubble, this is an image. So that then in the workflow, I can treat it as an image. So it's, uh, it was called uh, rendered URL. Uh, and then I want to save to Bubble storage. If you don't do this, Bubble is going to remember the location of the file, but it's a file on someone else's server and I'm sure that they clean them out every so often, um, only hold on to them temporarily. So I need to save it to bubble storage and I'll call this one my uh, templated image. But of course you can make that dynamic. Cool, right, let's go ahead and test this. But one final thing before testing it, I have actually given the no source for the image. So it's dynamic and I'm getting it from my custom state. So that's the location there because the custom state that I'm saving the result in is here on the page. Right, that now means that we should test it. Let's refresh it. Okay, and I'll just put test here and I'll put test subtitle. And I click render design. So there's the loading bar going across the top. That's my bubble app waiting for a response. And there we go, we get it back straight away. So I think we'll leave it there. Uh, but do remember that there's much more that you can do with templated. Uh, you can add in web, uh, let's actually just see what it says about webhooks. Uh, okay, yeah, so you can use a webhook, uh, fine. Yeah, there's plenty that you can do, plenty that you can explore, but hopefully this has given you a good foundation for how to use the templated API in Bubble, and I think it's a really cool tool. I think it's very good value. If you've got any questions, as always, please leave a comment below.